Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to the special OAA Now football preview show, the white edition here. I'm Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells, and the host of Tween Taramina's on Oriented Television. I'd like to welcome those watching on the local voice on SoundCloud and those watching on YouTube, also those watching on Oriented Television. Of course, we had the gold two weeks ago. We had the blue last week. This week, we have the white division. So without further ado, there are six teams in this division. So of course, um, so when you look at this division, it's going to be very, very competitive this year when you look at the teams, the quality of this division. So let's look at the division. Let's start with Bloomfield Hills. Obviously, the Blackhawks are a team that really struggled when they got up to the white last season. I mean, a lot of inexperience, a lot of youth on this team. Um, a lot of experience coming back for um, Bloopy Hills. Now, Coach Dan Laurie wasn't at media day, so here is Bloopy Hills at the podium talking to the media. Good afternoon. Thank you for having us. It's an honor to be here with all you coaches, all you players. I am not Coach Laurie. I am filling in for Coach Laurie. I'm the receiver's coach. I've been with Coach Laurie since 2007. He's still out of town right now. Um, an honor as well to Coach Harrington. Uh, he's a legend. Um, trying to teach these young guys, you know, about him. You know, I don't know if a lot of you guys know about him. I know you heard about him, but fantastic individual. Uh, Coach, uh, as I'm up here, I do have one question for you. Is that your new look going to be on the sideline this year? Is Coach Petrito looking good over there, Coach? New look, new look. But, um, but thank you. Uh, we are excited uh, this year today. Um, I brought with me uh, Jonah Jacob, Braden Brodsky, and Parker Ng. Um, Jonah, our center, defensive lineman, started for us last year as a junior. Uh, Braden, he'll be a third year starter, offensive line, defensive line. Parker, started for us as a junior last year at linebacker and played fullback for us as well. Um, a couple other guys I'll, I'll just briefly talk about. Uh, Jace Reed at running back, started for us last year. We're excited about him coming back, uh, running the ball with, for us. Um, Gabby Cote and Richard Frankfurt, uh, two receivers. Uh, both those individuals will most likely be going both ways as well on defense. Um, so yeah, just to piggyback on everybody else, uh, kind of what they're gonna say, we're excited about the upcoming season. Uh, we have good numbers returning, uh, along with a strong work ethic that has carried us uh, through the past offseason. Uh, we opened up week one with a well-coached uh, C-home team. Um, and we're looking forward to getting going Monday morning. Uh, it should be a fun season. And one other thing I just want to add that, you know, us coaches, you hear us coaches talking to seniors out here, you know, I could probably speak for us coaches and media. If we could get one Friday night back, for maybe one play to suit up. There's nothing like it, gentlemen. There's nothing like it. Enjoy it. Take it all in. This is your senior year. You take it all in. Every play counts. Have a great season. Be healthy and enjoy it. Thank you. Now, one player Bloopy Hills did not mention in the um, in the um, press and the press presser was Kieran Crosley. Of course, he is a defensive lineman. He played everywhere last year for Blue Beale Hills. He also played quarterback for them. And I know quarterbacks are one of the biggest questions for Blue Beale Hills coming in the year. Obviously, you mentioned Gavin Colte could spend some time also at um, you know, wide receiver as well. He's also DB. Um, Richard Blankfort's another guy to really watch for for Blue Beale Hills. Um, when you look at the um, schedule for the Blackhawks, of course, it's going to be really interesting. Um, the Blackhawks do open up the year at home against Birmingham Sea Home. Of course, I know um, the good folks at the BIF 88-1 over there in Blue Bale Hills will have that game um, for sure. Um, week two, they host Stony Creek. I mean, it's a rematch of a Cougars win last year against the Blackhawks, so that'll be really interesting there in that one there. Week three, they take on Rochester. Of course, um, Blue Bale Hills and Rochester have had some good battles. Um, this one could be a very interesting game because obviously both teams are gonna be very young this year. Um, I, I think that'll be a really good game. I think that game's at Rochester this year, so that'll be really, really interesting there. Um, week four, they take on Farmington. Um, again, another interesting matchup there. Um, I think it'll be interesting there, that matchup with the Falcons. I think that one's at Falcon Field um, between those two teams. 
Um, September 22nd, they take on Harper Woods. Of course, Movie Hills went down to Harper Woods last year, fell on that one of the Pioneers. Um, Harper Woods, of course, we know they got a lot back. Um, September 29th, they take on A&T. Brutal matchup there. Um, be a real good test for their corners, especially against Southfield's high-octane offense. Um, week 7, they take on Groves. Um, that's going to be a really tough matchup there. Um, of course, we know the rivalry between Coach Dan Laurie and Brandon Flaherty. Week 8, they take on Rochester Adams. Um, brutal match going against Veer. Um, obviously, you know, um, Boopy Hills, they do take on another Veer team in Seaholm. Both those two teams run the Veer. And then week 9, to close out the year, it's a rematch at home against North Farmington. Boopy Hills won that one last season by a touchdown at Ron Holland Field. Now the game's going to be at Blue Bill Hills. So when you look at the Blackhawks, um, again, a lot of experience on this team. But when you look at the history of success in the division, that could be a problem. I mean, like, that could be a big problem, I think, for Blue Bill Hills going forward. Is can they, you know, find a way to win, especially when you're looking at their strength being the offensive line in the running back spot, which is usually not a, um, a strength of Blue Bill Hills. Normally they like to throw it out in the air, like to spread you out, you know, but... It kind of looks at this year's team, the strength is going to be running the ball. And I don't know if that's Blue Bay Hills' forte this year. So, but it's going to have to be this year for the Blackhawks if they want to have any success this year in the white division. So what's going on from Blue Bay Hills? Let's go to Farmington. Of course, Farmington's a new team in the white. Obviously, last year they went to blue. Um, shared the title with Seaholm. Ended up going up to the white this year. So here's Farmington coach Jason Albright talking about the Falcons. I want to thank Coach Vernon and Rochester for hosting this again. Um, three seniors I brought with me today, Cameron Petaway, running back, defensive back, Owen Madison, safety and wide receiver, and Michael Woods, uh, wide receiver and defensive back. Uh, you know, this group of seniors, we've had a handful of them up on varsity. Mikey has been a varsity player for four years. The, uh, these two and a handful of others have been up on varsity for three. So. We're really excited about the leadership that they bring um, with some of the youth that we'll be having on varsity this year. We've had a great off season. Uh, I think this is the first summer that I've been in. We've been able to use our weight room in the high school. So, uh, you know, the strength program has really kicked off and, and helped us improve in that facet. Um, looking forward to the challenge of uh, moving up to the white this year and uh, playing different teams that are, uh, you know, well respected and well coached. Um, you know, everything that we do is working towards, you know, building better men. And I think these, this group of seniors has uh, really taken on that challenge in doing so. Uh, everybody stay safe and have a great season. When you look at Farmington this year, obviously you lose a quarterback like Dominic Peschel. It's going to be a tough way to lose um, a, a very a three-year quarterback like that he's brought to the Farmington program. Last year, this was a playoff team a year ago. Um, but went down to Temperance Bedford and fell in the first round of the playoffs there. It was a crazy game there. I talked to Coach Albright about that on the podcast, um, talking about that game. And also the returning players, of course, Cam Petaway's one I'm really high on. Owen Matson's another one. Mikey Woods is another one. So I caught up with Coach Albright, had an interview with him as well, talking about how Farmington's going to look this season. I got Farmington coach Jason Albright here. Coach, um, obviously we talked on the podcast about the team. How's the quarterback situation been between the, from the podcast to the present day? Good. I mean, we, we had, I think, one other uh, seven on seven. So it's really just, you know, I keep, I keep saying, I tell everybody it's not real football in seven on seven. So we're going to wait till we get pads on and actually have a pass rush. And, um, you know, hopefully by mid to late the next week, we'll be able to kind of have a better idea where we're at. Talk about your um, schedule. It is not an easy schedule to open up the year. So what's your thoughts on the schedule? Uh, you know, we schedule teams uh, based on like how we think we will be in comparison. I don't want to schedule anybody that's going to be a, a pushover. But, I, you know, I think Henry Ford is a team who's, I think, going to be a five or six win team this year and um, will give us a good F, uh, uh, battle up front. And, uh, and then Reese Puffer is going to be coming, bringing back a lot of athletes just like us. And, uh, I know their defensive coordinator well uh, from years past, and um, you know, just excited for that kind of change in, in scheduling. Like we're not playing the same old teams anymore. Um, and then you know, we get the the gauntlet of the OAA White, and then we end up with Lake Orion and a crossover, which will be 
uh, tough and a, a tough road game, and then Utica. So, you know, it, I hate going back-to-back -back long trips, but it is what it is. What's the expectation this year, Coach? Uh, expectation is just battle and, and do everything that we talked about as a program, what we hang our hat on and, you know, just fight and, and uh, play together, play as a team, um, and continue to build, you know, our players and our program into being something we we, we want to leave our seniors, we, we want our seniors to leave a, a, a legacy, and, you know, we kind of stand with that. Thank you real much, Coach. Thank you. When you look at Farmington this year, a lot of people look at the schedule and say, where's North Farmington on that schedule this year? Of course, we know the rival for the Farmington Cup. It's not being played this year, of course, with Farmington being moved up to the white division. I did go and touch in um, specific detail with Coach Albright on the um, podcast about it. So we talked about that. So when you look at the schedule for Farmington, though, it opens up at home against the Troy Henry Ford. Of course, a lot of Farmington home games will be broadcast on Farmington TV 10. Um, but they open up the year with Detroit Henry Ford. That's going to be a very interesting match. Of course, Detroit Henry Ford last year was a postseason team. Um, yeah, they're in Class B, but I mean, like, but still, it's going to be an interesting match between those two teams um, with Farmington and Detroit Henry Ford. Um, week two, they take on Muskegon Reese Puffer. Of course, Muskegon Reese Puffer travels to Farmington to take on the Falcons. I mean, like, this is going to be another very interesting match. Of course, Reese Puffer was a playoff team a year ago. Um, it's going to be interesting. I'm curious to see how that matchup is going to be between both those two teams. Week three, they take on Groves. I mean, this is going to be another interesting matchup, of course. Farmington, if they can get their quarterback situation figured out, um, it's going to be an interesting matchup um, over there between um, the Falcons and the Falcons, of course. It's going to be interesting there, of course. Groves, we know, has got a lot back. Farmington, we know they got a lot back, but the quarterback situation, there's a question mark there. Um, Blue Beale Hill, September 15th, that'll be a very interesting matchup. Of course, Blue Beale Hill is, of course, we know, a very young team this year. So we'll see what happens there with them. Week number five, they take on Southfield Arts and Tech. That's not going to be an easy matchup, especially with them. Southfield's proven playmakers in the, um, off their offense, their high-octane offense. Um, so that's going to be an interesting matchup there. Week number six, they take on Rochester. Um, of course, Farmington and Rochester know each other quite well. Um, so we'll see how that one goes there in that one. Week seven, Harper Woods, first meeting between these two teams. Uh, actually, I, don't, I mean, it's been a while since these two teams have met, actually. Um, but, but it's going to be an interesting matchup, I mean, like, with, with Harper Woods and Farmington. I mean, like, um, it's going to be very, very interesting, to say the least, there. Week eight, Lake Orion on the road, homecoming uh, for the Lake Orion Dragons. I mean, it's going to be just absolutely tough for Farmington. Going up against an experienced team like Lake Orion, um, you know, on their homecoming, which makes it that much harder. I mean, so it's going to be a really interesting matchup there with the with the Dragons there. And then Week Nine goes out to Swinehart to take on Utica. Last year, Farmington was upset by Utica um, on their home field. I still I still can't figure that one out. How Farmington lost that game to Utica? Of course, Utica's two wins last year came against them and Rochester, both OA teams. So. You know, so it's going to be very interesting to see how Farmington does this year. I'm really curious to see how the Falcons, like, um, how they move up from the blue to the white. I mean, like, obviously, you know, and also not dealing with North Farmington this year on the schedule, of course. They do keep the Farmington Cup for another year, but it's just unfortunate that with the schedule how it is, it's like, you know, we don't see that Farmington Cup game this year. So it's really unfortunate. I know the players feel bad about it. So, you know, so... That's my take on the Farmington Falcons. I think they're going to be a good team this year. Um, a lot of expectations for them. I, I think they're going to be very, very good this year. Who knows? We'll see what happens. Could they surprise some people in the white? Maybe. We'll see what happens there. Um, next we go from Farmington. Let's go to Groves. Obviously, when you look at Groves, he's a team that um, last year made the Division II state semifinals, um, made a surprise run to the postseason, um, had Seaholm's number in the past. But when you look at Coach Brendan Flaherty, there's a lot of excitement when you look at the grow at the Falcons this upcoming season. Good afternoon. Uh, thanks, Coach Bird. Rochester, as always, uh, for a great event. Um, appreciate your host, and I know it's more. Uh, it, is a, it is a pain in the butt putting all that stuff together. And hopefully, I was not last this year getting my sheet in. Uh, so, learn from the past couple of years. So. Uh, Coach Meyer, uh, welcome to the OAA. Coach Jefferson, welcome to the OAA. Uh, a couple of new coaches. Um, 
I think it's a fantastic league. I think it's one of the best in the States. Um, and it's great tradition. Coach Harrington, as always, has mesmerized. You know, he just, he says stuff that we've all probably said a version of, but he just has, you know, a way of saying it. And that's, you know, probably what's made him so great or one of the things that made him so great. So uh, we miss you, Coach, but we don't miss you. So just, uh, we appreciate you. Uh, I got some guys up here, uh, a couple of seniors and uh, one junior. Uh, Henry Bob Lovett is our center. Mohamed Diop right there. He will be a defensive back for us, special team standout. I have a B. Lou as a linebacker and a uh, tight end for us. Uh, Braden Hall uh, will be a fullback and defensive end for us and drop end for us. Aiden Wands learning some guard this year, but he's been playing D tackle the past couple years. Uh, Bryce Lattimore will be a linebacker for us and some fullback. Avery Gatch is a tackle on offense and uh, he'll play some D tackle on defense, maybe some DN. Kate Hardy is our third year uh, returning starting quarterback for us. So uh, with Caden leading the group and some good men with us, we're excited for this year. Uh, I think a couple highlights for us, our first week, we got a, a tremendous opponent and it's a good battle right down 13 mile with North Farmington. Uh, Coach, uh, Coach Harrison, is, we talked about putting together a, a Special Olympics tri tribute in that first week and raising some money for that and some awareness, that will be great. And I'm sure he might speak on that too. Our second week, another <laughs> tremendous whopper coming out of the gate. West Bloomfield is coming to our place. And at that time, we're going to have a, uh, a game. Uh, we're going to commemorate uh, Dominic Shrewsbury, who coached at West Bloomfield for a long time. He also coached at Groves for a little bit. Dom's going through some tough times now. Uh, Huntington's disease, and he's having a rough go, but we want to honor him that week. And uh, we'll be putting some, you know, pressers on it and stuff like that, but I'm going to uh, honor Dominic Shrewsbury that week. Everything else, we're really fired up. Coach makes a ton of sense there. Talk to these guys all the time about the senior year. Like, we all had that, whatever it was, conditioning week or that, that one drill or something like that. And the guys always complain and they'll, you know, piss and moan about it. But then all of a sudden, you talk to the alumni guys and they're like, boy, I miss that. I wish I could go back. Because you get that much time to play football. You need to get to play in college, it's that much time. And then it's done. And then you're playing pickleball or some old man stuff. So enjoy it, let it rip, good luck, stay healthy. Thank you. Coach Blitter mentioned Groves has a lot of experience coming back. The um, issue that I have with Groves is, of course, when they get in the postseason, most likely going to have to deal with Warren D. LaSalle. Yeah, I mean, like, obviously the Pilots have had Groves' number the last few years um, when you look at the season series between those two teams. Um, obviously, Caden Hardy, quarterback, coming back three-year starter. Avery Gock, a lot of people have been talking about. Um, offensive, defensive linemen getting a lot of looks from Division I schools. Uh, Chris Little had, the, had 10 interceptions last season for Groves. I'm um, expected to be back in the corner, back corner this year. Zach Rodgers is another guy to keep an eye on. Um, Noah Sanders and Mario Lovasco forms a very good one-two punch at running back, um, obviously. And then, of course, you have that loaded offensive line and defensive line. Groves should be very, very good this year. So I caught up with Coach Flaherty to talk about the Falcons coming into the season. I got the coach of Beverly Hills Wiley Groves, Coach Brendan Flaherty. Coach, um, how's everything been this offseason for you guys? So far, so good. You know, guys are working hard and getting after it, and us coaches are trying to get out of their way and let the boys just uh, get after it. Talk about the experience you got and the schedule. It is brutal what you got this year with the schedule. Um, so how's that been going for you guys? Well, that's like I, you know, I've said that a couple times. Like, uh, you know, one, that's, that's OAA, and then OAA White's pretty good top to bottom. Uh, but I think that, you know, there's good and bad things about that. It's brutal each week, but that's how it should be, I think. You have to work your tail off to have a chance to win. Just, I mean, have a chance. But, like, last year, you know, we battled through some stuff, got through some adversity, grew up, and then, you know, made it to the playoffs and we made a run to the uh, semis. And I think if we don't play that schedule, then we don't make that run. You know, iron sharp is iron and all that stuff. So it was good. What is your expectation this year, Coach? Uh, you know, our whole thing, I love Coach Harrington's comments about winning the league. You know, I just, I just keep reiterating, like, hey, concentrate on winning the league and being our crosstown rival. If we worry about those two things, the end of the season will take care of itself. Thank you really much, Coach. Thank you. When you look at Groves this year, obviously 
the schedule, you know what I mean? Obviously, but Groves has had a habit of some real slow starts. I mean, like, and when you look at the schedule this year, it is brutal. I mean, obviously going to Ron Holland week one, um, taking on North Farmington, it's a special Olympics game, obviously, between those two teams. I mean, it's going to be interesting. Last season, Groves won 34-19 over North Farmington in Beverly Hills. Week two, they host the Lakers of West Bloomfield. That is going to be a very difficult matchup for Groves. Um, but I mean, a lot of, I think that could be a really good game between those two teams. Both teams have experience. Both teams are very, very sound offensively. Also very stout defensively. That could be a real tight game between those two teams. And that, that could be a trap game for West Bloomfield um, taking on a Groves team. You know it's going to be the underdog in that game despite being their home opener. Week three, they take on Farmington. Um, this is going to be another interesting matchup, of course, um, with Groves. I mean, like, that'll be, it always is with Groves and Farmington. I mean, it's going to be really, really interesting there. Week four, they take on Southfield. And this could be a prelude to if Groves can win that game, they have a shot at maybe the white title this year. Southfield, we know, is loaded with experience. I mean, Groves, they got some good corners. Obviously, Zach Rogers and, um, and, um, Cam and um, Chris Little are going to be really, really good corners. I mean, that'll be interesting to see how they match up against Isaiah Marshall. Um, week number five, it's Rochester. Um, Rochester, a very young team. It's going to be an interesting match between those two teams um, over there. And um, Rochester, I mean, week number six, they take on Harper Woods. It'd be in Beverly Hills, of course. Actually, I think it goes, goes to Harper Woods this year. Um, that matchup last year, Groves won that one. It was tight um, with them and Harper Woods. I mean, it was tight. So, and I expect it to be tight again this year between the um, Pioneers and the um, and the Falcons. It'll be really, really tight in that one there. Week seven, they take on Bluebeer Hills. Um, it'll be a very interesting matchup there. See how that one goes between those two teams. Of course, Brendan Flurry, Dan Laurie, they know each other quite well. Week eight. This one could be a trap game for, for Groves because Ferndale, it's on the road. Um, it's an interesting match. Ferndale's got a lot of experience. Um, but I'm curious, if, this is where I think I call it a level up game for Ferndale. But Groves, you know, is going to be that measuring stick to see where the, how they match up. And of course, Groves obviously is in Division Two for the playoffs. And also, um, Ferndale's also in Division Two for the playoffs. Could this be a playoff preview? Who knows? Um, and then week nine, they take on Seahome. Of course, um, Groves has won 12 of the last 14 meetings against Seahome. And when you look at this matchup here, I mean, like, I, I understand Coach Jim DeWall's frustration against Groves. I know he said on the podcast. Um, but when you look at Groves, 12 of 14 against, C, against your arch rival from 13 mile, that is a good sign. So when you look at Groves this year, a lot of excitement for them. Um, slow starts, a little bit concerned for me. Obviously, you know, I mean, like if they get out with another slow start, it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, obviously last year they had that loss to Oxford and, you know, then they went on to the state semifinals. So a lot of expectations for Groves. Curious to see how this team does this year. And when you look at the Falcons, a lot of excitement for them this upcoming season. So let's go now from the Falcons. Let's go to the pioneers of Harper Woods. Of course, when you look at Harper Woods, last season lost two games by a combined nine points. Got a lot of experience coming back. So here's Harper Woods coach Rob Oden at the podium talking about the Pioneers. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Rod Oden, head football coach at Harper Woods High School. A um, little bit about last year, our first year on the field in the OAA. It was as advertised. You guys are great. Week in and week out, the top level competition in the state is very demanding. Uh, we learned a lot from our initial experience. We finished last year three and six. Um, for us, of course, we severely underachieved. A lot of that is due to attrition and injury. So we're hoping this year, number one goal, of course, is to stay healthy so that we can finish. You know, we kind of limped to the finish last year with a young football team. We only graduated five seniors, which is very promising. This year we returned 19 starters. Uh, so we got a pretty, pretty good group of young men back. With me today, I got six of those seniors. These guys are all four-year guys. That's kind of how they got here today. So they've been with us, some of them since middle school. 
Uh, they've been with us a long time. So from my right and your left, our middle linebacker, Willie Powell, our defensive tackle, Eron Beeman, our wide receiver and defensive back, Jacob Odin, one of our safeties, Jalen Wilkerson, our other safety, Anthony Sams, and then our center, our starting center, Justin Johnson. These guys kind of are the straw that stirs the drink, you know. We kind of go as these guys go. It's a player-led team. Great senior leadership on this team. This year's team has 21 seniors. That's a big class for us. We're a school that has an enrollment of, I think, 781. But we'll play in the white against some of the really, really, really large teams. We're excited about the opportunity to compete and get out there and play. We look forward to the competition each and every Friday. And um, thank you guys for inviting us out. When you look at other notable players for Harper Woods, obviously you got Stephon Buford, a quarterback. Of course, we met, he mentioned Jacob Oden. Dakota Grant's going to be an impact player as a freshman this year coming up for Harper Woods. You also got another quarterback in Nate Washell, who I've been really excited about. Of course, I talked to um, Coach Oden on the podcast about, um, about Nate Washell. Also, Ramity Hoos is another one. Dwight Houston at running back. Uh, Willie Powell running back. Javon Jones up front. Um, Bryant Weatherspoon is another guy I'm excited about when you look at Harper Woods. Um, there's a lot to like about this team. 21, return, 21 seniors on this team, 19 returning starters. So I caught up with Coach Odin to see if anything changed from the podcast to, to, this, um, to the interview. I got the coach of the woods, Coach Rob Odin here. I'm coach, and we talked in the pod a couple weeks ago. Any changes made this off between from the podcast to now? No, no changes from the podcast to now. I think everything is pretty solid moving forward right now. Talk about your, um, talk about obviously your quarterback situation. Of course, um, we talked last week about your quarterback situation. Um, um, how's that been going? I think the competition has been great all summer. The guys kind of push each other and whoever wins it, the other one has, will give their full support. I think if uh, Nate wins it, which is our younger guy, uh, the team will rally around him and support him, but that would mean that Stefan, the senior quarterback, would help us a lot more with wide receiver duties. You would definitely see both of them in every game we play, taking snaps from under center. So there's a package built in for both of them, either way it goes. So what's your expectation this year, Coach? Uh, if we can stay healthy, we should make a run for the state title. This is our best team in the six years that I've been at Harper Woods. And I'm not bragging, but just watching these guys lead and the hard work and the selfless sacrifices they've been making, I know that we'll have a great year this year. Thank you really much, Coach. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Harper Woods is going to be in Division Four for the playoffs. Of course, when you look at that schedule Harper Woods has, it is nasty. So when I look at that schedule, I said to myself, okay, Harper Woods is in Division Four for the playoffs. So maybe three or four wins could get them into the playoffs just with that schedule alone. But when you look at the schedule for Harper Woods, they go to Stony Creek week one. That's going to be very, very interesting there. Of course, some clashing two different styles. Harper Woods, we know, are very athletic, likes to run the ball. I mean, very athletic. We know they can do both throw and run the ball. It'll be a very interesting match with Stony Creek, a team that likes to really play their style of play, which is slow the game down, run the ball. It'll be very, very interesting there. September 1st, they open up on their new turf against Lake Orion. And this could be a shootout between those two teams. Harper Woods, we know, is very good defensively. Lake Orion, of course, we know has got a very, very good offense. So when you look at that matchup, that could be a classic over there in Wayne County between um, the Dragons and the Pioneers. Um, week two test will be a good matchup between the Dragons and the Pioneers. Week three, they go to Southfield to take on the Warriors. Last season, of course, Harper Woods um, lost at home to Southfield. And we know, and, that, and that's going to be a very interesting matchup between the, um, the Warriors and the Pioneers. That'll be a really great game. As I talked to Tyler Kept a couple weeks ago on the podcast um, and Scott Bernstein, that could be a classic, classic game of the year between those two teams quarterback matchup you got the battle between um, you know coach Odin and coach Marshall that's gonna be really interesting there week four Rochester comes to Harper Woods 
obviously last year Rochester um, beat Harper Woods. Um, it was a interesting game between those two teams. Rochester won in a defensive slugfest there. Um, had to score a touchdown in the middle of the fourth quarter just to win that game there. September 22nd, Bloomfield Hills. That'll be very interesting um, between the Blackhawks and the Pioneers. That should be a very interesting game. I think that game's at Bloomfield Hills this year. Um, September 29th, it's Groves. It'll be another top test here. I think that'll be very interesting there between those two teams. Of course, Groves went one last year in Beverly Hills. I think this year's game's in Harper Woods. So that'll be really, really interesting there. Week seven, they take on Farmington. Um, I'm curious to see the matchup between Cam Petaway against Harper Woods' defense. Um, Harper Woods, we know, is going to have a very, very good defense this season. Then week eight, they travel to Clarkston to take on the Wolves. And that's going to be just a really interesting matchup. I'm curious to see how, how Harper Woods handles the travel up to Clarkston, how they can handle the um, Clarkston's ground attack, obviously. That could be a key matchup there. But I'll be curious to see how that matchup goes between the Pioneers and the Wolves. And then week nine, rematch with Roseville last year. The Panthers beat the Pioneers at Harper Woods. Now the game this year is gonna be in Macomb County at Roseville. So for Harper Woods, I'm looking at that division, division four, one of the toughest schedules in the state in that division. I think if they can win at least three or four games, you know, just that schedule alone, I think that'll get to be a lock for them to get in the playoffs this year with that division. I think they got a great, but I think they'll win more than that this year. I think they got a great chance to not only do well in the, this season, in the regular season, but also in the postseason. It wouldn't surprise me if Harper Woods is a player in Division Four and maybe contending for a Division Four state championship this year. As Coach Odin mentioned on the, on the interview and also on the podcast, very excited about this team when you look at Harper Woods. I think this is a very scary team this year to watch in in Division Four, but also in this division this year. This could be my dark horse to watch. So what's going on from Harper Woods? Let's go to Rochester. When you look at the Falcons, last year, great success despite getting in at five and four. They won their first, um, they won their first ever um, postseason game in school history by knocking off Stony Creek. Um, then they fell to Rochester Adams, a team they haven't beaten since 1996. So Rochester, they lost a lot of talent from a year ago. So here's Rochester coach Eric Vernon at the podium talking about the Falcons. Again, my name is Eric Vernon, head football coach here at Rochester High School. Um, thank you again to everybody who showed up today, um, media players, coaches. Uh, I think this is, again, a great event and an opportunity to showcase uh, some of the best players in the state, in the county. Um, I brought four players to me today who, uh, who are seniors, who I think uh, – kind of epitomize what we try to do here at Rochester, the Rochester type football players. Um, they're, they're tough kids, they're kids that you're not gonna see high end recruiting boards and things like that, but they're, uh, they're great high school football players right now who work hard, do everything we ask them to do. They understand their role um, and they fit in really well with kind of what we, what we try to do. Uh, first up, we have Isaac Putris. Uh, he's a defensive tackle for us, does a great job kind of plugging up the A-gap, taking on blocks. Um, he's a great leader for us. Um, he's going to kind of help us out on the offensive line as well. Has uh, a great, great feet and uh, is just a tough player. Um, to my right here, we have Daniel Cable. Uh, uh, Daniel, he's an outside linebacker for us. Um, kind of came into a starting role towards the end of last year. Um, and again, does a really good job of understanding his role, his job, plays hard. He's a multi-sport athlete, plays hockey and lacrosse. Um, and, and we're excited to see him uh, play this year. Uh, to my left here, we have Bassem Youssef. Uh, Bassem is kind of our uh, do-everything player for us this year. He's going to play some wide receiver. He's going to play some running back for us, play some free safety, play some outside linebacker for us as well. Um, and again, he just has a big smart player, um, very gifted, and he's kind of learned the game. We're excited this year for, uh, for him to, to be able to play a lot of different roles for us. Um, and then on the far right, we have Cam Williams. Cam is a returning starting offensive lineman for us. Um, he is, I think, can be one of the best linemen in the, in the county, for sure. Um, Hard-nosed hard player, fires off the ball, um, wrestles for me, and is one of the best uh, the heavyweights in the, in the county, if not the state as well. So excited to see him this year and see what he can do. Um, and again, these are just kind of the, a group of what I think we have some, uh, a good senior class. I think we have a really good core group of young players as well who uh, if we can get them kind of up to speed. I'm um, excited to see kind of how they fill in. 
Uh, the last couple of years, you know, last year, two years ago, we came in second in the league. Last year, we came in second in the league as well. Um, like Coach Harrington talked about, our goal is to win the league. You can't take uh, a league championship away from kids. Um, and we're, we're working hard to, uh, to try to, again, have that success. And if we stay healthy this year, um, we're looking forward to, to having a great year. Uh, thanks again to everybody who uh, showed up. And uh, I hope everybody gets good luck this year. When you look at Rochester this year, obviously younger, you're going to be a young team this year. Got to replace quarterback. You do have Basim Yassif coming back. I mean, he's going to be playing everywhere, according to Vernon. Isaac Putras up front. Daniel Cable. Jack Lower's been a guy I mentioned. Cameron Williams. Adam Galeski's another guy. Um, I'm curious to see where Rochester does with Jake Tandy this year. Of course, last year, Tandy played wide receiver. Um, but obviously, with the graduation losses of, um, of Greg Congano, um, and also, um, you know, from last season, they did lose their quarterback last year to graduation. I mean, they had, they, they're gonna, there's going to be some big holes to fill at Rochester. I'm, I've been really concerned about this team's program strength. Very concerned. A lot of question marks when I look at Rochester. So here is Coach Eric Vernon. I, ca I caught up with an interview with Coach Eric Vernon to talk about the Falcons. Coach, how are you? Good. How are you doing? I got Rochester Coach Eric Vernon here. Coach, um, made the playoffs last year. Got your first win in in school history in the postseason by knocking off Stony Creek. Um, how how was that? How did that win? You know, create a um, a change for like the um, with the spirit of Rochester. Well, I just think overall, I think it was a big a big component to the culture in terms of expectations. I think when when I first started years ago, um, you know, the expectations I think were a little bit lower for some of the so building up that expectation. So now kids, the senior class and junior class, like that's an expectation: make playoffs, win playoff games, and I think that kind of goes a long way to just building up that culture of the program and. Um, you know, if you believe you can do it, you, you can do a lot of things when you believe in it. So, talk about the quarterback situation. Obviously, you know you're replacing a lot of talent. Um, how's the quarterback situation been for you? Well, that's a, that is the big question mark coming in. Obviously, we lost Alex Blanton you know, from uh, he was a four-year starter for us from last year. Um, losing Grant Calcagno as well. We're, we're losing every touchdown that we scored last year. Um, so the quarterback situation is a little bit uh, up in the air right now. We got a couple guys who. I think can step up and do pretty good for us. Um, you know, we're just going to try to find our best athlete and have have him have the ball in his hands every play and, and try to go from there. So, talk about the Adams problem a little bit. It's been like it's been going around Rochester. You know, they have you guys haven't beaten Adams since 1996. Um, how it's got to it's got to eat in your head a little bit about that. It does. I, you know, we, we we try to compete and we've competed really well with them lately. Um, obviously, we want to we only kind of turn these close losses into victories, but it's not like a lot of teams are beating Adams either. It's they're, they've been pretty they've been one of the top programs in the state every single year. Um, and we're we're just going to keep battling, and keep working, and obviously it's great having such a successful program in your city because that's you know that's the the bar that's set. And so our kids are excited for it. They're out excited for the opportunity this year um, when we, we eventually play them. But you know we try to worry week to week. So looking forward to playing Utica week one for sure. What is your expectation this year, Coach? Again, it's play hard and, and to take a game week by week. And obviously, the expectation is win every game we play. But we got to hopefully, uh, like I said, take it week by week and stay healthy. And just I'm looking forward to coaching a good, good group of kids. So, Thank you really much, Coach. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. When you look at Rochester this year, and there's a lot of expectation now, especially after making the playoffs last year. Now, it was, it's the first time they made the playoffs since 2010. Of course, I'm not counting the 2020 season when everyone made the playoffs. But... When you look at the schedule this year, it looks interesting for Rochester. I mean, they open up the year at Swinehart's against, against, Roch against Utica. Of course, last season, Utica beat Rochester on a last second touchdown with no time left in the game, scoring the final play of the game to beat them. And I know a lot of people at Rochester want to get that game back. And I'm, it's going to be a very interesting game. Of course, Rochester had an experienced team last year now Utica's got a um, now Utica has got a little bit more experience this season with Rochester bringing a very young team, so that'll be a really interesting matchup over Adam Swinehart between um, Utica and Rochester. That'll be a really interesting. I think it'll be a tight game between those two teams. September first, um, Rochester goes to Adams. I mean, like when you look at a course, 1996, 24 game losing streak. I mean, you know. 
it, that's good. I, I know that has to be eating Coach Eric Vernon and the Rochester fan base alive. I mean, obviously, I don't know what it takes, you know, for them to beat Adams, especially with the way they have. I mean, this could, could this be the year they get Adams with Adams being a young team this year? Maybe, but Rochester's got their fair share of young talent as well. So, you know, so it's an interesting matchup here between Rochester and Rochester Adams this upcoming season. Um, but it's still a tough match for Rochester regardless. Um, September 8th, Bloomfield Hills. This one could be very interesting between those two teams. I think that the Blackhawks and the Falcons, this could be a very, very tight game, to say the least, when those two teams play um, for sure. So that'll be a really interesting matchup between those two teams. Week 4, Rochester goes to Harper Woods. I mean, when you look at that matchup, it's going to be an interesting game because now Rochester has to go to Harper Woods. Now, obviously, when you look at the standings from, from the coaches' poll, they had Rochester ranked high, higher than Harper Woods. I don't think that's necessarily the case here. I think Harper Woods got a lot more experience, plus Rochester's got to go to Detroit, got to go to Harper Woods to take on, um, in Wayne County, to take on um, Harper Woods, a very good team there. And then you have Groves week number um five, which is going to be really tough for them, especially with the young team. I think that game's at Rochester this year, so that'll be really interesting there. Um, week number um, six, they take on Farmington. Um, it'll be a very interesting matchup between those two teams. Um, week seven, they take on Southfield. Um, like I said, it's going to be another very tough game there for Rochester, taking on a very good athletic Southfield Arson Tech team. Um, week number eight, this is Stony Creek, because last season, Rochester, um, you know, they split. Of course, Rochester lost the regular season meeting with Stony Creek, but got the back in the playoffs. I remember that on that final possession touchdown by um, from Alex Bueno to Grant Calgano. Um, that touchdown and then the winning extra point um, really sealed that playoff fate there. And then week nine, they take on Wall Lake Northern. Um, Northern, of course, they're going to be a solid team in the Lakes Valley this year. I mean, like, obviously, you look at that conference, you know, you look at teams like Water Vermont, Milford, Lakeland, South Lion, South Lion East. That's a tough conference there, but it'll be a tough match for Rochester taking on a, um, a good Knights team, a good Wall Lake um, Northern team. I mean, like, I think I forgot to mention Wall Lake Western in there in that conference as well. So for Rochester, it's going to be a tough matchup in that one for sure. For Rochester, it could be a very interesting season for them, but if they can keep that momentum going, I think the Falcons could surprise some people and maybe win, you know, maybe surprise some people, maybe maybe prove the coaches right, maybe. So who knows what it is with Rochester. So I'm curious to see what happens with them going forward with Rochester there. So let's go to our last team now. It's the Southfield Arson Tech Warriors. When you look at the Warriors last season, a lot of success in the regular season, won the white division title, but the postseason's gonna be the one that people are gonna judge ANT this year. When you look at the high octane offense they got back. So here is Southfield Arts and Tech coach Aaron Marshall at the podium talking about his experienced heavy Southfield Arts and Tech Warriors. Start off by saying thank you very much to Coach Vernon uh, for hosting this every year. Uh, I'm going on my uh, third season as the head coach of Southfield. I brought six seniors with me. Uh, I'm gonna start to my left, Isaiah Marshall quarterback, Jalen Todd, DB, Mauricio Clayton linebacker, Tashi Brace for wide receiver, Reggie Gardner, D tackle, Matthias Davis, linebacker. Um, thank you all again for having us. Um, you know, I always brag about our league. It is by far the best league in the state, in my opinion. Um, the competition for week in and week out, I mean, you have to prepare. Um, there is no gimmies on our schedule any year, right? Every year is a battle. Um, you know, we embrace it. Uh, we're excited about it. We have um, the most seniors. This is my 10th year, going on my 10th year at Southfield. I was the old coordinator for six years prior to this, so going on my ninth year. Um, but again, it's all in the preparation. I'm excited. This year we have 29 seniors. And for us, that's a lot. Um, so again, the leadership is there. I'm excited about the offseason, what, what we've done, um, the work that we had, and the leadership these guys have displayed. Um, and I'm excited to, to check in the camp Monday morning, August 7th, and, and get to work. Thanks, thanks again. I pray everybody stay safe. I pray everybody stay healthy. Um, and good luck to everybody. Thank you. When you look at the Warriors, 
obviously experience matters. When you look at a course, the um, when you look at a course, um, the players obviously starts with Isaiah Marshall. Got Tashi Brace, Davia Burt, running back, Xavier Bowman, wide receiver, defensive back, Juwan Jarrett, same position, Jalen Todd, Shannon Fleming, Reggie Gardner, among others. The Warriors are loaded with proven talent. Proven Division I college talent. But they haven't been able the last few years when I look at the strength of schedule. But I did catch up in an interview with Coach Marshall to talk about their, especially their postseason problems against Detroit Cats Tech, you know, a, a team that they're going to be playing this year again. But also I caught up with them talking about the Warriors. I got the coach of the Warriors, Coach Aaron Marshall here. Coach, um, you look at Southfield, a lot of experience coming back this year. Um, so talk about the experience you got coming back. Uh, we're excited, man. We have about 28, 29 seniors. Um, so we got a lot of experience. Those guys, all a lot of them played as sophomores as well. So they've been part of good seasons and bad seasons. So again, they, they've been battle tested. So I'm really excited um, you know, for their leadership this year and what they're going to do. Talk about your schedule. You open up with Detroit Cats Tech week one. Mm -hmm. uh, Detroit Cats Tech, you know, you beat them early in the year last year, but then you lost them in the playoffs. So how is it like playing a team like Detroit Cats Tech? Um, it's always a good challenge. And, and I like opening up with them because, again, it'll tell us where we are, right? So, you know, we learned a lot from that game last year, uh, both of them. Um, so, again, playing a team of that caliber and that tradition um, is really good for our program. Um, you know, and so, so we got our work cut out. What is your expectation this year, Coach? Um, I expect a good successful season, man. Um, you know, our goals, we want to win week one, we want to win our league, and ultimately we want to win a state championship. Um, and that's no secret um, in our program. Um, but again, one day at a time, again, I'm, I'm, our biggest challenge is checking into camp August 7th and having a phenomenal camp. Um, so we're going to start with that and, and see where everything unfolds. Thank you really much, Coach. Thank you. When you look at the Warriors, of course, you're looking at that schedule and all the expectations. You look at week one, Detroit Cast Tech, Wayne State, Saturday afternoon, 1 p.m., Wayne State. Detroit, this is the fourth meeting in the last two years between the Warriors and Technicians. Detroit Cast Tech has won three of those. Southfield Arson Tech has won one. That was the 56 54 wild and crazy affair last year in week one. Southfield fell to Detroit Cast Tech 25 14 in the postseason. So this is going to be a very interesting matchup. Week two, Clarkson at home. This is going to be a clash of different styles. Southfield likes to run and gun it. You know, the RPO, everything, you know, they have the proven receivers. Their offense is going to be one of the best in the state. Going up against the Clarkson defense that was just completely shredded a couple times last year. I mean, shredded at least four times. Gave up over um, 30 points. Three of those, 40 points. So it'll be very interesting there. See how Clarkston and a and match up over in Southfield. Week three, home Harper Woods. This is going to be interesting. Harper Woods, a lot of experience. Southfield Arson Tech, a lot of experience. This has the makings of a great, great game between those two teams. With Harper Woods having to travel into Southfield to take on the Warriors in that one there. Week four, Groves. This and Beverly Hills, this is going to be very, very interesting. Question for me is, can Southfield Arson Tech, you know, especially with that gauntlet of sept in September, oh, man. I mean, like, that's going to be just tough. Especially those first four games to see where they're at. I mean, that's going to be just brutal. Week five, Farmington. So, and that's not going to be an easy five-game stretch for the Warriors. I mean, Farmington, we know... They could be a very sneaky team as well. So Farmington's a team that I think could do some very, could do very well in this one. But it'll be a tough matchup, I think. You know, be a, I think it could be a high offensive game between those two teams. Who knows? We'll see what happens. I mean, I am still worried about that defense. You know, with Southfield Arson Tech, week number six, Bloomfield Hills. Um, Bloomfield Hills, very young team this year. Um, Rochester, same thing, young team this year. But then, of course, everybody's going to look at that week eight game when they go to the Swamp to take on the Lakers. And West Bloomfield went to Southfield one last year over there in, um, in Southfield. So this would be a very interesting matchup. You know, it'd be, I'm curious to see that it'd be a great 
offense versus defense matchup. West Bloopy Arena is very good defense. I mean, like, led by Kari Jackson and Jamir Benjamin. I mean, like, and Jacob Swain. I mean, Southfield, of course, counters with Isaiah Marshall and their profound, proven wide receivers. And then week nine, they close out the year with Detroit Renaissance. Um, you know, I think this is going to be a very interesting matchup, but I just think Southfield in that matchup week nine, I think they're a little bit better than Detroit Renaissance when it comes to talent. Um, I think that's going to, I think that game's in Detroit this year. So that'll be very, very interesting there on that match. So when I look at the Warriors this year, I'm excited about this team. I think A&T could be a really dangerous team this year. When you look at, of course, the offense, I've talked to Kyra Cut about this. I talked to Scott Bernstein about this. They are going to be very, very exciting to watch. And when you look at the projections, of course, um, you know, of course, when you look at the projections, I have A&T winning the um, white this year, obviously, with their, um, with their high octane offense this year. When you look at it here, I got, when you look at them by projections, I got A&T winning the division. I think the seven and two is a pretty good record for them. I think Detroit Cast Tech could be a very tough game for them. I think West Bluefield could not be another tough game for them. Harper Woods, I think they'll win six games. I mean, I really like the Pioneers this year. I mean, they're gonna do very, very well this year. I think they're gonna be a team that I'm really excited about this year. Uh, Groves, I have them at six and three as well. I think Groves, you know, in three and two in the league. I just think Groves, when I look at Groves, I don't think they're better than a t or Harper Woods. I just think that, you know, when you look at based on an experience standpoint, obviously Groves does have their first year experience as well. Um, but I just think, you know, the schedule, you know, for a and and Harper Woods, yeah, Harper Woods is going to be really tough. I think Harper Woods, don't be surprised with them. I think they're going to win the Division 4 state title this year. I am calling it right now. I think Harper Woods wins the Division 4 state title this year. Farmington, I think it's the playoff team. I really like where Farmington's at. Um, young team, I love Cam Petaway as a running back. I am really high on this team. Despite the record, I think the schedule gets them in the postseason. Um, even though, you know, they have an under 500 record. But I just think that Farmington, with the strength of schedule, I think is going to get into the playoffs. Uh, Bluebia Hills, I just think they're going to be in for another long year. Um, being in the white is going to be tough. It always has been for them. Um, even, I mean, they've had their success when they were in the blue. But being in the white, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with them. And then Rochester, I just don't know if I could see them. You know, they got, they got so many players in place, obviously quarterback. Um, running back's going to be, a, I mean, obviously running back's a question mark. A lot of questions with Rochester this year. It could be a very long year for Coach Eric Vernon um, when you look at the Falcons this upcoming season. So when you look at the top 10 rankings, of course, of course, these will not be the um, top 10 rankings to start. But, you know, when it, when it, of course, you can follow that on the blog at SaginawBay46MittyAtBlogspot.com. But when I look at the top preseason top 10, obviously you got a and I have them too. Um, Harper Woods I have four. Um, Groves I have seven. Um, so really when you look at the top 10 in the white division, you know, kind of makes sense when you look at the rankings to start out the preseason top 10. Now, of course, we're going to be in week one. After week one, when you look at the rankings, so these will change. Of course, if you want to take a look at the blog at saginawbay4650fboxspot.com for the latest information on the updated rankings coming into the season. So a lot of excitement to look at with, with the white this year. So a lot to, to look forward to. All right, I'm going to sign off here. I wish everybody the best of luck in the white division this week. Uh, make sure you follow the blog at saginawbay4650fboxspot.com for the latest up to the minute updated football information regarding the white division. Of course, we're going to have the red division next week on the podcast. So stay tuned then. And I'll take care, everybody, and I'll see you all next week, everybody. God bless and see you, see you next week. God bless all.